breakfast puppies? This podcast contains adult language and content and is meant for mature audiences. Listener discretion is advised. You are listening to The Glitter Boys. Jacob, I don't know if we've done this yet. Welcome to the podcast. Yeah. Well, great to be here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks for listening, folks. We'll catch you next time. <laughs> No, I hope um, we should actually do that one day. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we we did that on Bikers Dice and Bars, which is oh, where yeah. Jacob and I first started doing podcast work together. And it was an episode about can scooter riders and bikers get along? And we like we started off, we asked the question, we said yes, and that was the end of the episode. <laughs> it was wonderful. Yeah, and we actually got some positive commentary on it, too. Yeah. Great. <laughs> I think several people had also written us in very joking, you motherfuckers, <laughs> kind, of, <laughs> kind of comments. And it was very welcome. Thank you. <laughs> yep. We're not above a little wholesome trolling every now and then. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no, uh, it was, you know, it was interesting to join you, too. Um, you know, I, I can't say I was entirely happy with how I ended up coming on board because, you know, NPC reached out to me, he and I had worked together on several other projects. We knew we had decent chemistry on the mics. Uh, we, he, we talked about the, we talk about the subject matter a lot, We play palladium products together. And then due to an unfortunate turn of events, uh, Matthew was unable to co-host for an extended period, which meant that NPC reached out to me and I happened to have availability and was able to step in and keep the train rolling. But, you know, at the end of the day, was I very happy that I was able to do that? Yes. Am I happy that I'm still here? Absolutely. Love the two of you love our topics, love the community we got around here, would have perhaps liked it to happen for under better circumstances, particularly for Matthew. <laughs> you know, these, uh, you, you try and go through life as a smart man, but if you're not natively smart, you will make horrible decisions from time to time. <laughs> so, yeah. Thanks, man. But I got to say, I am really glad you're here. Um, like NPC and I had established a dynamic which just made it flow. And I have to say, you've stepped right into that. And like the, the flow is, it's, it's great. Like I, I feel you're doing, you're doing great here and you bring knowledge in areas that I, I certainly don't have. Well, thank you. Yeah. You know, I, uh, my brain is a font of useless information that doesn't do much other than win me trivial pursuit games. And, you know, I mine it for resources when it comes to gaming hand over yeah. fist. So your ability to always know a little bit about anything continually astounds me. We will be having conversations. We, as in me and somebody else will be having a conversation about a random topic. And then suddenly like, Oh wait, what about that? Do you know anything about that? Oh, wow. Who could we ask about that? And someone will always say, we could probably ask Jacob about that. <laughs> Yeah, um, you are not the only people who will suddenly get random messages from going like, do you know anything about the poultry laws in the post-colonial period? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no, it's great to be here. I love what we're doing. Uh, the I love the fact that I feel like I'm a value add rather than a third wheel. So Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Now, NPC started with Palladium Fantasy. And I started very much with uh, Robotech. What was your particular uh, first path into Palladium? So when it came to my path into Palladium, I actually had to reach out for, to some old friends of mine back in middle school. A small rural high school. So the people you went to kindergarten with were the people mm -hmm. you graduated with, you know. 
And so that gaming click was pretty well set by first grade and ran from there. So we were talking about it and trying to figure it out. And we're pretty sure that our first introduction to Palladium Games was when I tripped across a copy of Recon. Yes, that's what I thought you were going to I say. I thought it would be, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. 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 Uh, and from there, the, the, question, the question was, was it when I tripped across a copy of Recon or when my old friend Robin tripped across a copy of Ninjas and Super Spies? And we narrowed it down to where it was within a year and which happened first. We weren't entirely positive. But it was one of those two. Um, from there, you know, I, I know the timeline rather well. Um, <laughs> I fell into the sad, sad hole that is uh, the life of a, Rob a Palladium Robotech fan. <laughs> it is a difficult road to hoe. I it is a difficult road to hoe. Huge fan of Ninjas and Super Spies. And then, weirdly enough, we figured out that we were playing Rifts before we actually got a chance to play um, Palladium Fantasy. Back in the day, there was a rather large collection of gamers in the upper Arrowhead region of Minnesota called the Midwest Area Gaming Enclave, MAGE for short. Mm -hmm. uh, and to this day, I'll trip into someone who will from anywhere in the United States and they'll mention mage in passing and I'll go like Midwest area gaming enclave and I'll be like one of 120 people that I keep tripping across in my life. <laughs> What's weird is how many of them have gone on to have sub successful careers in RPG publishing. I still mm -hmm. stay in contact with uh, writers for Catalyst, writers for Wizards of the Coast, a uh, bunch of other projects. A couple of them are personalities on YouTube these days. But yeah, that's where it all started, you know. And from there, I really enjoy it. Enjoyed it. I've always been someone who's a little bit more into your crunchy gaming, and Palladium scratches that itch while being smooth enough if not necessarily smooth in the way the rules are written <laughs> to appeal to someone who likes a, lot, a little bit of crunch in their games and not be a total deal breaker for people who like minimalist RPGs. And it, it sits in that sweet spot. I will admit over the course of my life, I've fallen in and out of love with riffs multiple times. <laughs> um, Haven't we all, but palladium as a whole has had, a spot in there ninjas and super spies tmnt in high school with riffs thrown in there uh, sitting down my 18 16 17 18 year old butt at a table full of uh veterans playing recon you know just some awesome times that's how i came to palladium and other than the period in my life where i was out of gaming for about three years it was it's been a constant excellent excellent what uh what, what's your breadth of playing and like beyond your your initial nostalgic favorite what would you say your your favorite is today my favorite Palladium game today so oh you're asking me to kill my children um <laughs> i will drop everything for a robotech southern cross game if right? i have the opportunity <laughs> just full stop but what is it about that one what is it about that one it is a combination of okay for those of you who are familiar with the robotech series many people believe that the southern cross section is the weakest entry in the three anime they cobble together to make the robotech series is that and the second series? That's yeah. the second one. <laughs> Ironically, some of the best books, though. Some of the best books. And the depth of setting mm -hmm. that is hinted at is some of the most interesting. Which, you know, for people who know me, it sounds odd that that would be the one. 
because they're like, oh, the Battlestar Galactica Oid Macross series should call to him. Uh, the weird post apocalypse prepper dream that is Invid Invasion should be. But my sweet spot is um, from post Macross. So mm-hmm. the uh, Zentradi control zone in the Amazon. That's not the right term. Rebellion. Yeah, the Zentradi Rebellion through Macross, just because there's some great political stories that can be told there. Um, you can one day be fighting. Uh, you know, the Robotech masters and the next day be dealing with intracene warfare um, on earth to a political uh, machinations uh, between the various branches. Mm -hmm. The fact that of all the Robotech games, it's one of the ones where people can play characters that are all driving giant robots, but have very unique and different characters with very unique backgrounds and skills. Your, your, your desert specialist is coming at the game completely different than, you know, your, you know, someone riding around in a tank and, but they can still play together on the same playing field. Uh, But have, you know, and then you have your military police running around Mm -hmm. trailing or trying to rain on everybody's parade. (laughs) Um, So you know, Robotech Southern Cross, super big favorite. Ninjas and Super Spies will always have a special place in my heart. I enjoy TMNT when it's bent towards the more gritty side, the more towards the original comics, that real late 70s, early 80s vibe mm-hmm. that it really leans into. That's, I will, I go hard for that. And, you know, especially uh, early 90s also is a sweet spot for TMNT, uh, especially yeah. if you're oh, from yeah. the Portland area where, you know, uh, Satyricon and TMNT are just kind of permanently merged in my head for some reason. Uh, I can see a mutant deer just getting down <laughs> at the Satyricon. <laughs> oh, poor one out from a dead homie. Oh, yeah. And then, but of course, Recon. Yeah second most unloved child of the palladium series <laughs> you know it's what it's, would you say the first is oh pharaohs oh okay yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. we're on the same page good we're, yeah it's, it's the one they published once and have never revisited uh, completely different gaming system mm-hmm. so not uh, mechanoid space Oh, uh, you know, I, you know mm, <laughs> mechanoid's got a compendium all right mechanoid's got a compendium <laughs> We're just, you know, those of those, me and the other old recon heads are just happy they still print our book. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But yeah, that's, those are my big loves. I I like what you can do with the Rifts Rifts world. Uh, It's just so often a little bit much and... The negotiations you have to put to to put a group together is sometimes more than I'm willing to deal with because yeah. you have to get everybody on about the same power level. Otherwise, you have to get really creative as a game master on how your freaking street rat and your Cosmo Knight are gonna coexist. <laughs> you know, it's it it can get challenging. It's I think Rifts is one of those ones I enjoy playing more than running. Ah, uh, yeah. yeah, I can see that. Because I'm, as a player, and NPC knows this, because in the current game, he's watching me play the uh, hapless peasant surrounded by some of the most competent (laughs) badasses in fantasy you're going to run into. I love that. Um, And I don't mind that. So if I'm a wilderness scout trucking around with a glitter boy, a a ex-Samus pilot, and a a baby dragon, it's like, whatever, I'm good. I just keep rabbits on the table when we're between settlements. (laughs) (laughs) The one thing I will say is, unlike a lot of role-playing systems, Palladium puts a lot out there, but doesn't explore it in depth. So there's space to breathe. Interesting avenues and alleyways that are mentioned in the books, but not explored in hyper detail. We've talked in the past about how you things are 
mentioned in the books, but not gone in into great detail. There's there's not this drive that you see with some other publishers to fill in the details or uh, create sections of a larger world where this section over here is for where game masters and players can write their own stories, yeah. but we're going to dictate the stories of whatever happens in the rest of Faerun. You, you, you all yeah. can be limited to the Sword Coast. It's definitely not nailed down as much as... Yeah. yeah. And when they do nail it down, they do it in interesting ways. I know that the you know coalition Tolkien war is a very divisive thing amongst a lot of Palladium Rifts players, but at the same time, they nailed it down in a way that still gave you room to maneuver. Mm-hmm. Yeah, now that I'm thinking about it, like I was just thinking about like uh, Warhammer 40k. It's like where where do you fit your character in there? Well, oh, we have two 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 things there, and that's that's it. That's the only chinks in the armor that you get to play in. <laughs> oh, okay. And like um, what you said about you know Faerun is is spot on. I um, remember specifically like this this clear memory from my twenties. Uh, a good friend of mine who I met through a gaming group, through a D and D gaming group. He was really into D and D three point five in the Forgotten Realms. And like he went and got he bought every single hardback that they made of for the Forgotten Realms. And his shelf was impressive. Yeah. And his the trunk that he carried from location to location full of all those books was impressive. And they all looked really nice. And I love the colors and I love the layout. But fuck, it was like every inch was given extreme detail it was one it was overwhelming there was just so much to work with that uh, you might be like oh cool this is a cool plot thread i can work with this but unfortunately there's so much else around that that two you're Mm going to have other people come and play who know it better than you and Mm -hmm. then when you misstep they're gonna let you know (laughs) and and not only uh, that but i mean like you put that book down, pick up one of the other 60, and you're like, fuck, where was that again? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. You know? <laughs> well, that's... That, it, you can kind of experience something like that with, with all the Rifts books, but less of a... I mean, you're not going to forget where the anti-monster was, you know? Yeah. But you are going to forget where that one rule was. <laughs> where the hell did that OCC <laughs> appear? Yeah. <laughs> yep, yep. Where were the radiation rules again? Oh, <laughs> under a superpower in Heroes Unlimited. Unlimited. Right. <laughs> yeah. Unless you're dealing with space, and then it's either uh, Mutants in Orbit or, uh, God, the one that recently came out. Um, anyways. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it's it can sometimes be that. But at the same time, Palladium is rather kind to on the fly, just yeah. because, you know, I mean, again, it's room to maneuver it's not only kind yeah. it kind of requires you to run on the fly that's its thing in my opinion and the way they yeah. do it it feels like it's not a bug it's a feature you know that's yeah. that that was that was their intent i feel that it is deceptively complex like you were saying jacob there's enough simplicity but also enough crunch and the crunch is there if you want to use it mm-hmm. but i think a lot of people are intimidated by that crunch because you don't have to use it right at its core it's a 1d20 system of action with a 1d100 system of indirect skills and that's it go forth and do (laughs) you know and oh the skills so many skills so many skills so many skills well thanks for sharing where you come from like uh what would you if, if you had creative control for you know one project what would you like to see most well it would be a meta project I think so with the exception of Rifts, a lot of the Palladium games outside of Rifts and Fantasy, uh, but even Fantasy to a certain extent, are a time capsule of gear and equipment from a certain period. You cannot pick up a Palladium product and get stats on an M4. Right. And this a meta project to update the uh, 
the gear lists and gear rules, not to turn it into some fiddly accessory monster esque shadow run thing. But <laughs> I, you know, I would love to see it modernized and some new mm-hmm. options put in there and adding those things so we can. I mean, if you're playing Ninjas and Super Spies today, one of the biggest surveillance devices you can get is a Tempest system to read somebody else's monitor. Tempest systems haven't worked for over a decade. (laughs) (laughs) And generally didn't work for hardened applications for almost 20 years at this point. Yeah, Yeah. the super spy aspect of that game is woefully outdated. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's great if you're trying to run classic James Bond, but after that, it gets a little rough. Yeah. So yeah, uh, it would be a meta project, an overhaul. If you wanted something more detailed, Love from my boy Recon all day. We right. Recon needs expansions. It needs reworks. Uh, it needs supplements. There's so much there to go for, and the types of stories it ex- it tells well exist beyond the Vietnam setting, Be- beyond the. French, French Indochina War, Vietnam mm-hmm. slash uh, Malaysian crisis setting. And given the role I've got to witness recon play, especially for former vets with combat experience, it's like it, it needs to happen. And, you know, I, I would love, love, love to see that happen. Even just uh, an arms and equipment? Oh, arms and equipment conflict zone profiles mm-hmm. you know like i like off the top of my head uh i become the new kevin loses his mind and makes me the new line coordinator for recon okay so we're going to have the central african conflict zone book mm-hmm. the southeast asian conflict book uh, a specific conflict book dated to afghanistan that covers four different time periods you know the <laughs> The introduction to the introduction of uh, different forms of lick low intensity conflicts and being able to tell those stories like I and I've done a lot of that. Like I've done recon games set in Northern Ireland and dealing with the challenges of those settings, because a lot Mm -hmm. of people think of recon as this. You go, you are soldiers, you are shooting people, yada, yada, yada. One of the base game, uh, base scenarios from Recon is trying to help a village develop a economic base that is something other than opium. Ooh. This is a Recon game. Right. And, you know. Hearts it's, and mind stuff. It, it's the, the hearts and mind stuff and experiencing the challenges of that. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, there's so many stories that can be told in that setting and as someone who is very interested in other cultures and experiencing other cultures and being very aware that I'm an outsider experiencing all the other cultures, bringing that to the tabletop is super, super fun. And Recon lets you do that sort of thing. And, you know, like anybody who games with me where I'm the game master knows that uh, moral and ethical quandaries often show up in my games. <laughs> and recon is a huge, huge vehicle for that. It, what is the right thing to do out of, out of, out of a bunch of bad choices mm-hmm. and that sort of thing. And it's can be an incredibly empowering setting for that sort of storytelling. It's not all about yo, rah, rah, whatever your Western power of choice is. Um, or for some friends of mine who are, who are recon fans from Russia, Ukraine, um, hung- Hungary, um, but some Czech friends of mine, their versions of the same narrative. And so give me, re- give me the line coordinator for recon. And I, I got supplement ideas. I can even have some people I'd be tapping to write those supplements. <laughs> well, you heard it here first, folks. <laughs> this is our bid to get in the, our foot in the door. 
Yeah, the, through the Recon Avenue. That's going to be very <laughs> lucrative for us. <laughs> no, I mean, you said you wanted mechanoids. He'll take Recon. <laughs> <laughs> I well, will, Jacob, again, many, many, many thanks for joining us. Love having you with us. Love having you yeah. on the mics. Your perspective is, it, it, it's not a balance to us, but it is simply a, a third angle. And I like yeah. that. It's, it's, a, it's a nice triangle. You make a really good camera three. Yeah. <laughs> I'm always here to bring my <laughs> weird, militant, moderate point of view. <laughs> One day. We're going to get back into games like systems failure. And we could even do a Uncle Jacob's Guide to Prepping and Systems Failure <laughs> <laughs> as an episode. And I think I think you would be able to run with that. Yeah. <laughs> well, again, thank you for having me. Yeah. Yeah. And folks, if you want to say hi to us and also welcome Jacob several months after he's joined us, drop into our discord server and say hello we are always welcoming new people we love to have the conversation going just just come and hang out with us and make us feel cool and then we'll make you feel cool and it'll be a nice a lot of mutual cool making <laughs> yeah. of, yes <laughs> thanks for listening folks <laughs> to our mutual coolness making Starships, magic, mystic martial arts, romance. All of these can be found in A Cloak of Blades by Isaac Sher. You might have heard my name before. I've done a lot of voiceover work for Breakfast Puppies. And I've recently released my first novel. It's available on Amazon as an ebook and paperback. And you can get it for free if you have a Kindle Unlimited subscription. I do hope you'll support my work as you're supporting Breakfast Puppies. And it's been a pleasure talking with you today. Have a good one. You've been listening to The Glitter Boys, a Palladium Books fan podcast. Glitter Boys, Rifts, The Megaverse, and all other such topics are the property of Kevin Sambita and Palladium Books. Please buy all their stuff and help keep them in print and making more games. You can order directly at palladiumbooks.com, and their entire catalog is available digitally at DriveThruRPG as well. Our opening music is 8-Bit Bass and Lead by Furby Guy from freesound.org. This closing music is Caravana by Philip Gross, available at freemusicarchive.org. All sound effects used are self-made or acquired via Creative Commons Zero License. If you like what you have heard, find us on Twitter and Facebook as The Glitter Boys. That's B-O-I-S. And check us out online at breakfastpuppies.com slash glitterboys. And also join us on the Breakfast Puppies Network Discord at breakfastpuppies.com slash discord. And if you want to help us out, please spread the word and help us build a community. Thanks again for listening. We'll catch you next time.